In this video I will show how to evaluate definite integrals. So here we have a definite integral and what we said that this defines is this defines the area under the curve f of t with the line a with the line x and with this axis here. And we also said that let's suppose this is going to be some function some function a of x. Now what the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus says is that to evaluate an integral from a lower limit a to an upper limit b, so the upper limit could be somewhere here, so we can have b here, the line. So this would mean I'm looking for the area between the lines a and b here. So to evaluate this of f of t with respect to t, what you need to do is you need to take some antiderivative of f of t, evaluate it at b, and then take the same antiderivative and evaluate it at a. So let's think about what that might mean with the area function. So let's try and interpret this with the area function. So if I, if I wanted to evaluate, um, evaluate capital A at b, what would that be? So capital A evaluated at B would be the area between this blue line and this line here B under the curve and above the t-axis here. So this is actually going to be the integral, the definite integral from A to B of f of t dt. And if I think about what capital A of lowercase a would be, so we have capital A lowercase a. This, if I was to write it as a definite integral, it would go from a to a, f of t, dt. So what I have here is the area function evaluated at a, so that would just be here, and I can see that this value here will become zero. So this value is actually zero. Now, the second part of the fundamental theorem used any antiderivative. So we know to evaluate from, from the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know to evaluate an integral, we find the antiderivative of our function. So this capital F is representing any antiderivative of that function. So let's see what happens there. So we can say that capital A B take away capital A of lowercase a should equal to any antiderivative. So let's say I'm going to have f of b with some constant c and I need to subtract from that f of a with some constant c and then I can see what happens here is these c's will cancel out because I'm subtracting it and I'll be left with f of b take away f of a. So this is actually equal to f of b take away f of a and also I've, j I've already said that this area function evaluated at b gives me this and area function evaluated at a gives me zero so when I did this subtraction I get this take away zero so that's something I can have here. So if I'm doing this take away 0, then it's just this is the value that goes here. So I can say that this is the definite integral from a to b, f of t, dt. And that is what we wanted to show. So we wanted to show that this is the case. And we've done that here. So remember, what we're doing here is this is representing the area under the curve above this axis between the lines A and B and what we're saying is what you need to do to evaluate that is find any antiderivative of this and evaluate it at B and subtract from that the antiderivative evaluated at A and you can ignore this constant value because what we see is that when we're working this out these, these constants here they will, they will cancel each other out. I will now apply the theorem to show how to evaluate this definite integral. So we start by finding the antiderivative 
Um, so the antiderivative would be here 3x cubed over 3, add 10x squared over 2, take away 7x. And you will notice that I use square brackets here. When we're evaluating a definite integral, we can use these square brackets and then put the upper limit here and the lower limit there. Now, remember, we need to, uh, we, we ignored the plus c because we saw that cancels out. So we need to evaluate this at 3 and evaluate it at 1. But first, I'm going to simplify it. So if I simplify it, I will get x cubed plus 5x squared take away 7x and then 3 and 1 here. So if I evaluate it at 3, I will get 3 cubed plus 5 times 3 squared take away 7 times 3 and then if I subtract from that this evaluated at 1 so I'll have 1 cubed plus 5 times 1 squared take away 7 times 1 now I'll calculate what's in these square brackets and then I'll subtract at the end so I will have 27 Add 5 times 9 is 45, take away 21, take away 1, add 5, take away 7. So this uh, 27 add 45, that is um, 60, 67, and then 72. 72 take away 21 is going to be 51. 51 and I need to take away this is going to be 1 add 5 is 6 take away 7 is negative 1 so take away a negative 1 so here I can see that this would be 51 add 1 51 add 1 which is going to give me 52 okay here's another example I will evaluate this definite integral so we start with the square brackets um, this is going to be 2x to the power of 4 over 4, take away 9x cubed over 3, plus 6x squared over 2, plus x, and this is evaluated at 5 and 2. So simplify it first, so these fractions will simplify, so I will have x to the power of 4 over 2, Take away 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus x, 5 and 2. Now I will evaluate it at 5 and 2 and subtract. So I will have 5 to the power of 4 over 2. Take away 3 times 5 cubed plus 3 times 5 squared plus 5 and subtract from that um, 2 to the power of 4 over 2 take away 3 times 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared and plus 2 okay so here 5 to the power of 4 is going to be 625 so I will have 625 over 2 take away 3 times 125 is going to be 375 add this is going to be 75 add 5 take away from that um, this here is going to be 8 so 8 take away 3 times 8 is 24 add 3 times 4 is 12 add 2 um, now this here I'll try and simplify this first and then work with a fraction I will have okay so I've got negative 375 add 75 that's negative 300 Add 5 to that, that will be negative 295. So I have 625 over 2, take away 295. And I need to take away 
8 take away 24, that's negative 16. Add 12, negative 4. Add 2, negative 2. So here I will have negative 2. Um, let's make this a fraction over 2, so double it and make it over 2. So I will have 625 over 2, take away, this will be 590 over 2. And I need to add 2 to that. Subtracting a negative 2 is adding 2. Uh, this fraction will simplify to... 35 over 2, so 35 over 2. Um, this 2 here I can say is 4 over 2, so add 4 over 2, and then this will then be 39 over 2. So this definite integral evaluated would be 39 over 2. Now, here are some practice questions for you, so you need to evaluate these definite integrals.